Hello, welcome back. This is Calculus by Dr. Oz. So today we're going to have a very key question of calculus, finding uh, a limit. Uh, in fact, we have two different functions to work with. Uh, both are hyperbolic functions or, or functions involving hyperbolic functions. And at this moment, I want you to uh, uh, check out uh, the definitions of hyperbolic functions because this is what we're going to uh, need uh, in finding the limits. Uh, one key thing that you should take away uh, from this table is that sine and cosine hyperbolic functions are all written in terms of exponentials and, and all the rest, all the other hyperbolic functions are written in terms of sine and cosine hyperbolic functions as you see in this table. So, so in fact, all six hyperbolic functions are functions of exponential functions e to the x or e to the minus x. So I don't want to give you more hints, uh, but at this level uh, I am going to use uh, I'm going to use the definitions of uh, uh, these hyperbolic functions to be able to evaluate those limits. All right, let's get uh, started. All right, let's look at part A. Uh, we have the limit of uh, tan hyperbolic x as x approaches uh, negative infinity. Okay, so this is a limit problem. We can always uh, go ahead and use our, use our TI-84. Uh, to graph uh, this function, see what the behavior of uh, the function looks like. And in fact, I did that using the primitive uh, techniques for calculating the limit. We can have like a table of uh, sample values and the graph of the function. Uh, you can just see how the uh, function uh, behaves uh, as uh, x approaches negative infinity. Okay, so uh, essentially essentially as x approaches negative infinity so the corresponding function values uh, so it tends to uh, negative one so but we should be able to sort of like prove that um, prove that um, algebraically okay so for that reason we should uh, recall uh, the definition of uh, hyperbolic functions in terms of exponentials because in limit calculations as you remember from uh, calc 1 exponential functions are nicer uh, uh, to deal with than uh, hyperbolic functions uh, and, and plus this is the first time you're exposed to hyperbolic functions so uh, why not use exponentials to deal with uh, those limits so here all I'm going to do is rewrite uh, the tan hyperbolic x in terms of exponentials here we go so I'm going to use the e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2 all divided by e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 and if you flip the bottom over you have 2 over e to the x plus e to the minus x okay that takes you to let me just write down here uh, e to do x minus e to the minus x e to the x plus e to do minus x so this representation is way nicer uh, than than the original representation of sine hyperbolic x divided by cosine hyperbolic x and you can apply the by the way same trick uh, rewriting uh, these uh, maybe tan, cosecant, hyperbolic, secant, and cotangent hyperbolic in terms of exponentials to see how they look like. Um, so uh, right now I'm going to go back to uh, part A and, and, and rewrite this limit in terms of exponentials, okay? All right. Okay. All right. At this moment, if you pass uh, the limit, uh, uh, we have well, this term here is e to do almost like minus infinity, so it's one over uh, e to the infinity. So this term tends to zero, which is okay. But if you look at e to the minus x, uh, when you plug in uh, minus infinity, so it's it it pretends like e to the infinity, which is infinity, right? So this term tends to infinity so is this right and this one tends to zero so the top becomes infinity bottom becomes infinity so you're talking about infinity over infinity type indeterminate uh, form okay one way one way to tackle with this problem is to use the L'Hopital's rule 
But since you have exponentials at the top and the bottom, taking the derivatives of the top uh, and the bottom separately is not going to take you anywhere because you're going to have the same type of exponentials popping, okay? So uh, another way to tackle with this problem, detouring the L'Hopital's rule, is using algebra. Uh, and all I'm going to do here is to, um, uh, to factor out e to the minus x because that is the term letting the top and the bottom uh, going to infinity, okay? So it's going to be e to the 2x minus uh, 1, okay? And in the bottom, it's e to the 2x plus 1, right? When you hit the base is the same, right? You just add the exponents. That's how you get uh, the first term at the top to be e to the x. So this way I can cancel out uh, e to the minus x's, and I do know that e to the 2x uh, at the top and the bottom will approach uh, zero because they are like e to the minus two times infinity, right? So it's so this is almost like uh, e to the minus two times infinity, but this is e to do e to the two infinity, so one over infinity almost uh, uh, tends to zero. Okay, so this is sort of like your side work in your brain. Okay, so this term uh, is uh, approaching zero, and so is this term. So in total, you have the whole limit to be exactly equal to uh, negative one. Okay, so this is one of those examples that you have the L'Hopital's rule not working, but instead uh, uh, algebra is, is sort of like more appropriate for uh, this type of problem. All right. So this is the end of part uh, A. Uh, please move on to my next video to see what I'm going to do for part B. Bye.